who are we to counsel God? Like, who are you to give God advice about how your life should go? As if God doesn't know beyond what you know, as if God doesn't have a wisdom beyond yours, as if God does not see what you do not see, as if the creator of the universe doesn't know what's best for you. If you trust God and know that he loves you and wants you to have a life in abundance, you have to trust God in his response to whatever it is you're asking for. You do not counsel God. You don't tell God what's best for you. You trust God and his wisdom to inform to you what's best for you. There's no one here who can counsel God. You cannot counsel God. You should not counsel God. And really what Paul is speaking into is how upside down, how beyond our way of living and thinking the gospel is. The gospel, he says, in this, in the same letter, he says that the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is foolishness. It, it almost doesn't even make sense. And so Paul, as he's uh, breaking down the consequences of the gospel in 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 Romans eleven, Paul is is really he goes into song at the end, and and he 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 ends this chapter with this. This, this this admiration for God, this this awe about who God is, like, bro, this this is just so not how we run things. Like, this is so not how we do things. This is, man, this is so beyond the human way of doing things. Like, God's way is just so above our way. His kingdom is upside down. His His way of of blessing and of cursing just doesn't fit the human experience and the human mindset. It goes beyond that. And I think that's why the gospel is so hard at times for people to grasp because people have run their lives in one way. And the gospel is asking them to forego all of that to go, you know what? None of that actually works. Not a single one of those things actually works for you. And yet we still pursue it. It's the it's the rat race, right? It's the, man, I'm going to perform, I'm going to perform, I'm going to perform. But then you realize your performance isn't good enough. Man, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to work hard. And then you realize your hard work isn't good enough. Man, I'm going to be the best person I can be. I'm going to, man, I'm going to go. I'm going to be the best, best person I can be. I'm going to be the best father that I can be. I can, I'm going to be the best mother that I can be. I'm going to be the best cousin, the best uh, uh, brother, the best husband, the best wife. And we try to do our best to be the best that we can and then realize that even our best isn't good enough. It kind of sucks. But here's the hope that we have is that if we can see the world through God's eyes, See it through God's lens. Trust God in his wisdom and knowledge and realize that, hold on, God operates on a whole different rubric. And if we can live in that vein to know that our performance never measures up, but we have to trust the God who does all things through us, man, that gives you freedom to truly be who God has called you to be. Your performance will never be good enough. You will never be good enough. You on your own will never be good enough. Not in this culture, not in this society, not in this era. As much as you try, as much as you attempt, as much as you, man, I'm just going to keep doing my best. And then you realize, man, the world doesn't accept my best. Ah, but in Christ, you are good enough. In him, you are good enough. You can with him because it is by his grace and his mercy that you're here, not by your performance, not by your ability, not by your capability, but by the calling and the blessing of God on your life. What hope we can have in that, what peace we can have in that, what joy we can have in that. Paul goes into song and I can understand why up to this point, Paul is, is uh, he's, he's, He's giving you a a surgical, uh, rhetorical, intellectual breakdown to the Jews about the futility of their performance and their effort and their religiosity and their 
in our terms, churchiness, believing somehow that their works is going to be good enough to get them there. And so Paul has been surgical up to this point, breaking it down, cutting them, just cutting them in different, trying to shape and mold them and guide them to the truth of the gospel to know that, hey, your performance is never good enough. If it's grace, then it can't be works. If it's works, then it can't be grace, right? That's what we were reading before. If it's grace, then it can't be works. If it's works, then it can't be grace. You can't do it. It's it, and, and if it's grace and you got works associated with it, then it's no longer grace. And if it's works and it's got grace associated with it, then it's no longer works. So what makes me righteous before God? You're not righteous before God because of your performance. You're not righteous because you're a good person. You're not righteous because you went to Sunday school every Sunday and you went to church every Sunday. You're not righteous because you read your Bible twice every day. You're not accepted by God because you read your Bible two times a day, every day. You're not accepted by God because you went to church on Sunday every day. You're not accepted by God because you stayed a virgin all up until you were married. You're not accepted by God because you're just the best person ever. And you were so committed and you were the, 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 the worship leader at your church, or you were the one who was the deacon and deaconess. And maybe you were the one who was the youth leader in your group and you're the one. And so you think that all these things are the parameters in which you can find acceptance from God. I came to tell you that none of those things are good enough for God to accept you. They were never good enough. It might have been good enough for people to accept you, but not for God. In order for God to accept you, God had to forego any of your performance because none of it matters. It is the grace of God. 